Hey folks, and welcome here to Flex Line Productions as we bring you coverage of the 29th Annual City of Mobile Championships. My name is Dust Murray on the commentary, and joining me once again, second year in a row, it's Mr. Chris Downey. How's it doing? It's going good. Yeah, just uh, excited to be back here again with commentating you again and looking forward to uh, checking out this tournament. Yeah, so this time around, we were playing two rounds at Lang Municipal Park, round one and round three, and then our second round was at the Admiral. And uh, we got uh, a fantastic card of fantastic players here from the Southeast region. A couple that you see on tour, as we do have Cameron Coldblazer kind of leading the pack right now. Always a strong player out here. Yeah, and then uh, I'm going to join him as well. And, you know, really around Mobile, it's the Cam and Matt show and just whoever's shooting good that weekend. So <laughs> hopefully this weekend we can you know, see some new players try to take that uh, crown for Matt or Cam. Yeah, and of course, Matty O, a guy who's now a mainstay on the Disc Golf Pro Tour and doing really well, ranked within the top 10 in the U Disc Golf ranking. So always a strong player. And here we are, starting off on hole number one. Yeah, uh, hole one, uh, you can attack it multiple ways. Forehand and the spike are the more common, and then you have a straight shot. Most players will take uh, this spike hyzer that Cam's lining up. And it's kind of a nice way to control distance, get over the top of these trees, try to take them out of the play, and usually able to land within circle one as long as you get the right angle. And it was... Pretty low wind, I believe, on this first day, so it didn't really come into a factor, you know what I mean? Yeah, we uh, we had real good weather for this tournament. Usually, you know, in the past, it's been uh, storms, but uh, it was a beautiful day out there. And you parked that one. Yeah, that that, that spike shot's my go-to on this hole. I think Caleb's going to line up the forehand. Yeah, the left lane is really open. If you can kind of aim at that bush between those two trees on the left-hand side which Caleb has pretty much gone right at that, maybe a little more inside than he wanted, but still gets some good ground action. Oh, he's right up there. Yeah, you know, hole one is a is a must get to start your round. Yeah, really these first five or six holes are ones you really want to get. Uh, definitely some of the more scorable holes on the course. Oh yeah, um, one through seven is really very central out here at uh, middle school before it starts getting a little longer. Absolutely, so you are gonna see Matty O followed that same Spike Heiser route, but gets an unfortunate tree kick and roll there, but I think he's still within good putting range even with that slight tough break, I guess you could say. And we actually got Cam up first, went a little deep. Yeah, but you know, this should be no problem for Cam. This is routine. Yeah, able to put that one in there. And I think the rest of us, you know, should just come in and tap in our birdies because we're not too far out. No, not at all. And again, like you said, it's exactly how you want to start your round when the conditions are good and you're on some of these shorter opening holes at Langen. Definitely a way to kind of get your your round boosted. Is It's kind of like birdie or die, like you said, for the first seven or so holes in this course. Yeah, and you know, getting this turn, this three-round tournament, it's a, the course we're playing, you need a hot start if you're going to contend. Right, it was two rounds on the first day, and then we had the final round on its own day. Uh, so that's kind of how it played out, as usual, for the City of Mobile Championships. Of course, Batio here was our champion last year and has often been a champion at the City of Mobile Championships. And Cam, of course, right there, uh, has also won this a few times. Yeah, I want to say that Matt and Cam have actually won it the last, like, five or six. I'm not completely sure who's won which, but I know they've really alternated uh, the last couple of years. You've had some top threes here, haven't you? Uh, the last two tur tournaments I played at CMW, I believe I've gotten top three. Yeah. So now we're at hole two, a you know, a pretty stock shot, isn't it? Yeah, most people just line up, uh, overstable putter or mid range, just hang it out to the right. You'll have a couple people uh, go to the left with a forehand uh, spike, but most of the time it's just a stable mid range to putter, uh, just to land by that tree about 10 feet from the basket. This is like one of the few Prodigy molds that Cam still bags. This is his A3, uh, of course, with Infinite now and puts EV7 putters, so has an open bag. Uh, but, yeah, that one has kind of remained as we see you now step up. Yeah, I'm going to throw a zone here. Um, like I said, just the overstable putters, you know, easy choice on this hole. Controversial, he's called the zone a putter, ladies and gentlemen. And I hung that a little wide, but, like I said, the over, with it being overstable, it got me a putt hopefully inside the circle. Yeah, pretty stock hyzer shot. Really the only things you have to worry about is if there is wind, that can obviously make it things tricky. Uh, if you get a little too high, you can sometimes get caught up in these branches on the right-hand side, but more often than not, it's a 
pretty simple shot as long as you don't go too wide and, you know, don't get unlucky on the ground action. Yeah, and Caleb was wide as well, but uh, he got more skip than what I got. So now we got uh, Matty O taking the box, probably throwing a harp or something like that. Just the uh, classic smooth form and get some great ground action there. And, yeah, he just makes it look easy. He's been wearing some bright colors this year on tour. Indeed he has. It's been cool to kind of see him really kind of rise to notoriety. Like he's been around for such a long time. He's always been super competitive. But I feel like this kind of new wave of viewership that we're getting in disc golf has kind of introduced a whole new group of people to who Matt is. He's always been a stud, but, you know, he's been doing really well this year on tour. Uh, really representing the area nicely on the big stage, so to speak. Yeah, so everyone around the South knows Matty O. Um, he's just always been a fan favorite around here, and now it's nice to see you know the whole world of disc golf to get to experience the same Matty O that we experience. Yeah. A monster on the course and also a great personality. A uh, very funny dude as he puts with the judge there and is able to just get that one in. So he'll get back to back parties to kick off his round, as many of you are about to do, it looks like. Yeah. Right now, it looks like we're going to start off back-to-back uh, -back star frames here on this course. Yeah, always good to see. As uh, Cam puts with the thigh, if I'm not mistaken, from EV7, kind of his go-to. So we got Caleb Huber stepping up here. Yes, and, uh, Caleb and I are actually both uh, sponsored by Flight Factory, so it was nice to you know, have a teammate good. on the yeah, card this first round. And now we get to hole three, which is probably the hardest hole on the front nine. Mm -hmm. uh, this hole, most people hang out the forehand over the water and play for it to come back, but then you got some people who go straight at it with a fairway or a mid range. You just Staying in balance mm -hmm. is the name of the game on this hole. Yeah, it's just that low ceiling that you kind of have to worry about if you go straight at it with the mid or the fairway driver up the middle. As this has swung out way too wide, that needs to get some type of magical skip to get back in bounds, and no, that is not going to get there. And yeah, that's the common miss on this hole with the forehand is that people just pull it out way too wide just trying to spike it in. I'm going to throw a mid-range up the middle. Uh, that's just my go-to shot, and I know I can just keep it safe. But it uh, looks like I put a pretty good pull on it. I just got to miss that tree. And, uh, hit the one tree you had to miss. Yeah. Still going to you know, keep you in balance, though. A little bit of a kick left. Going to make the birdie hard, but at least keeps you likely guaranteed to get a three. As it looks like Caleb Huber here is looking to take a similar route to yourself. Yeah, I believe Caleb throws a leopard three on this hole. And uh, he's got to ha have that get down. Ooh. And no, I thought maybe the tree might slow that down just enough to keep it in play, but unfortunately, he's going to find himself in the drink as well. So a couple of players going OB here. Matty O, our last to tee off. And Looks believe, like he's also eyeing the up the middle route. Yeah, and I believe he throws a mid-range on this hole, maybe a... Uh, I think he throws the trust a lot. It's yeah. kind of his mid-range of choice, but he also might throw an EMAC here or there. But yeah, just going to put that one right up the middle. Oh, that's great. And, and that's what you look for on this hole right there. So Matty is off to a good start already. Probably uh, like. And unfortunately, Cam's probably got to take this pretty far back. Yeah, he didn't really advance too much before it went OB. So this is even tough just to get up and down for Bogey. As I believe that's him throwing his alpaca, which is kind of infinite's P2 clone, I guess you could say. Yeah, and that was a good shot from where he was at. He's flirted with the water again, but you know, from where he was at, that's really the best you can ask for. And here's Caleb trying to see if he can maybe save par. He did advance a pretty good ways before going OB, so has a slight chance to walk over at the three. A little stepper. Ah, just a little too low, yeah, just so a just a bogey. Short. And then I'm coming up. I'm, I believe I'm either just inside the circle or just outside the circle, but this would be a nice uh, turkey to start off the round if I can hit this putt. This is probably like right on the edge, maybe like 35, 40. And I just gave it too much air. And kind of a death putt, honestly, with it being that high. I mean, if you don't catch the top band, you go over the top of the basket, you could very well be in the water. So a little bit fortunate to settle down there for the par. 
This is Cam looking to try to save a four. Lengthy putt, though. He's also probably circle's edge. Takes his time and figures it out. That's going to at least limit the damage. Yeah, that was a good four save because, you know, a five on this hole just erases all the, you know, the work that he's already put on this course. And, you know, making up strokes for Matty O can be tough, especially with him sitting here with a 20-footer maybe for two. Yeah, he'd be the only two on the card. So that will give him the slight edge here early on in this opening round, getting the turkey to open the tournament. Yeah, and, you know, this is the one hole that if you get this hole, you think you can birdie actually every hole in the front nine. So Matty is starting off very well. Yes, yeah, so he'll be able to take the par. This will be a bogey for Caleb Huber. So a couple of players losing some strokes here early, but still, of course, we're just getting started, so plenty of time to make that up as we head over to what is hole four, normally hole three on the course, but we, you know, numbered what was hole A right there, so yeah. Yeah, and in this hole, you know, we just take your straight putter. Uh, a lot of people go up the middle between those two trees, and you got a couple people that will throw uh, just to the right of that uh, oak tree right before the bush, and you just have it nestle up. Uh, if you go too far, though, you can run into some OB. And Matty O just, you know, putting it under the basket. So yeah. he was showing you the direct route to it. I'm going to throw the around the uh, right side of the tree, or that's what I'm going to attempt. Gotcha. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see those hyzers kind of hung up a little above the bush line and then kind of have it just fade back in. And so it looks like yours is attempting to do here. Yeah. And I said, I missed that tree. And I had a little bit more ground action than I wanted, but I checked up right before that OB. Yeah, that is the one danger on this hole is just pushing it a little too deep. It's very easy to do. There used to be a forehand line out left that you could play, but a lot of that's grown up now where that's really difficult to pull off. So, yeah, the backhand up the middle or just slight right, like you said, is the common play. Looks like Cam finding that the up the middle shot. Yep, it's a nice, a uh, little too low, catches that left bush line. Yeah, Cam's, you know, not looking like himself to start off this round. Uh, hopefully, you know, he can figure it out these next couple of holes and get back to the normal Cam we're used to seeing. As we see Caleb playing that hyzer line as well. Good height on that, and that is part. Yeah, that's about as good as you can get right there. Yeah, as you can see, Cam's got some work to do here. Very likely just laying this up for a three, honestly, though. Cam's kind of an aggressive player. He might give it a floaty bid, and yeah. He did, but he he gave it a little bit more loft than usual because he knew about the OB that he was working with. That's a nice birdie putt there for you. So, yeah, uphill putt at the beginning of the round. You know, I got three of the first four, so I'm feeling pretty good about my round so far. Yeah, just kind of some drop-ins here. Cam taking the par and, of course, Caleb Huber and Matty O just right there to put in some birdies. And so Matt so far, four for four. And you're, of course, just right there on his heels at three under. Yeah, and, you know, Matty O is, uh, if you can keep up with Matty O, you know you're going to have a good day. Um, hole five, uh, they actually move the pin closer to the water. Uh, most people go up the middle with a... Uh, straight to stable putter and just kind of have it land by that pine tree just so they can put it at the water. Um, more of your aggressive lines try to go a little bit deeper so that they're putting back towards the land. Yeah, it's one of those ones where you kind of put it up the middle and if you get enough fade to get near the basket for a putt, cool. If you don't, usually you're just going to see the players lay up, but that is just perfect execution for Matty O. Yeah, Matty O looks like he's got his uh, game dialed in pretty early. Absolutely. Just, As he was like fresh off of a, I think, second place finish at the Open at Tallahassee, kind of right before this tournament. So he was definitely in fine form coming in. As we see you kind of putting an envy up there, as you said. Yeah, and I landed in the one spot where you have to think if you're going to run the putt or not, because it's a death putt right at the water if you miss that putt. Absolutely. And it's like, do you really want to do that this early on? 
is uh, always the tough cause. We're going to see Caleb Huber throw, I believe, the same mold as you, maybe different classic, but he's, he's a little bit worried about that one. Yeah, he uh, went a little bit, uh, I think I threw the base plastic envy, he threw the low envy, mm -hmm. and just a little bit more uh, stability in that disc, and he actually ended up very well. He didn't like it out of his hand because he thought it was high, but it nestled by the basket. Yeah, really good shot here as we're going to see Cam looking to try to do something similar. And that might have a little bit too much fade. Yeah, that's got to slow down. And uh, he, he at sucks. least went out by the basket, but um, that's tough. That's that's the normal miss on this hole. Yeah, he should be able to get the three, but that is definitely not what you're looking for on this one. As we see you looking to run it, and you get it nicely done. Like you said, a scary putt, tough decision, but you've made it and it's panned out. Yeah, I told myself, you know, before that putt, like it's first round of the tournament. Like if I go out of bounds here, I can possibly make it up. Any direction off OB rounds, now, right? So I just went ahead and just went for the birdie. Yeah, so Cam just getting his meter here off the OB line, and as you can see, he's right there for a tap in three. So not going to do too much damage. But I know that he's already kind of a little bit behind on the leaderboard and probably knows if he keeps giving Matt this much breathing room, it could cause trouble later on. But uh, nonetheless, he'll at least get the par. And I don't know about a couple years ago, but usually Matt gets out to yeah, a hot start at this tournament and then Cam just comes roaring I back. I'm only, I'm only uh, I know last year, I know Matt had a good seven, eight strokes on him and Cam came back and made it a ball game in the last round. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it came down to like hole 16 or something like yeah, that for the last one. You can't count Cam out even if he gets off to a slow start. Uh, hole six is actually moved back right on the OB. Um, you're taking a uh, fairway or a distance driver and you're throwing it kind of at the next hole's tee and just have it stable up and maybe get a skip towards the, uh, the basket. And the one tree you got to miss is this tree that Matt just squared up. Yeah. You get to the left of that tree, you're feeling pretty good about this shot. Yeah, either side of it's good. And really, it's one of those holes that you want to get enough distance on it, but if you push it a little too much, you can certainly fly and skip past the basket into the OB water. And it's another one of those holes, kind of like the previous one, where you have to kind of think about your putt before you take it because you bring OB into play with a potential death putt as we see you kind of right in that range where you're going to have a decision to make. Yeah, where I landed at, you want to kind of be a little bit closer to that tree. I came up short to it, but if you land by that tree, it's just a maybe a 10-foot putt to the basket, and I think I'm about 30 to 40 short. Caleb's uh, taking the preferred line. I'm skipping right in front of that, and he's got a death putt staring at him, but it's only about 25 foot. Yeah. So here's Cam trying to see if he can get back into a rhythm here. I believe this is his... Uh Phantom Sword, which is essentially end of a remake in the PD. I know it's a control driver that he trusts quite a lot. Yeah, and it looks like he released that one a little early, but it got a good skip. And I think that ends up close to the OB. I'm not sure if he's out of bounds or not. Yeah, I think at this point we were actually looking at the rule sheet to kind of figure out whether it was surrounded by water or whether there was some type of OB line we had to consider to determine whether or not he would... Or maybe I'm foreshadowing a little bit, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, as we are going to see Cam here. Yeah, he's giving us a run, and, you know, he goes close to that, possibly out of bounds. And you saw Matt just lay up that putt. He didn't want anything to do with this OB. Uh, me, I'm wanting to give this a run because I'm still close enough to have a chance and hit a dead center. Um, my putt was feeling good to start off this tournament. Absolutely. You've been sinking them left, right, and center, that's for sure. So that's going to put you at five under through six holes, and so – that's going to tie you up with Matteo, who, like you said, had to kind of just lay it up. And this is what I was referring to, is after his putt that we were trying to figure out if he was maybe putting for par or bogey due to kind of the rule sheet. And that's why you see Caleb going first, because we're still trying to figure that out. And you saw Caleb walk up to look at this OB to try to decide if he needed to run this putt or not. I think he's going to give it a bid from where he was at, because it's only about 25 foot. But if he misses it, but she drills it, but if he misses it, it's just straight out of bounds. Yeah, good putt there from Caleb. I would say uh, me, Matt, and Caleb have got a good start to our tournament. Um, Cam, though, you know, is running into a little bit of problems here to start off. Yeah. So here's Matt just playing smart, taking the par. How you guys up for the lead. 
Caleb right behind you at four under after a great little birdie putt there. And I believe what we finally determined was, in fact, Cam was OB. Um, so this is for bogey at this point. Yeah, and this puts him back at even through uh, six holes. So he's got off to not the start he wanted to, to start off this tournament. No, not considering that, you know, these are some of the easier holes to score on here on this front nine. So definitely a little bit of a rough start for Cam as we hit the hold up for seven. Yeah, this is our first par four. Uh, most people throw to that white stake that we just passed with a fairway. Uh, some of your more aggressive players go roller like me, and uh, you want to try to just get it down as quick as possible and just have it ride that hill. And most of your rollers end up around this oak tree that, or pine tree that I'm right here by, and this gives you a chance to go for the eagle. Yeah, that was the most nonchalant explanation. That was a incredible roller, and uh, the fact that it puts you in a chance for an eagle is actually not as common as you made it sound. Uh, you can see a lot of rollers cut out early and go into the ditch line left, which is out of bounds, which is kind of the risk you bring in the play throwing the roller. But I guess for you, it was like it's early in the tournament. I can take that gamble. Yeah, um, really with this hole, um, how it's played is dependent on the wind. A lot of times you play this uh, hole, it's a right to left wind. So it just pushes the rollers to the uh, OB ditch. So we get up here with no wind on the tee. It was a no-brainer for me to go roller. Uh, yep. Matteo just kind of worm burned that one, but he should be able to get the approach up for an easy three. Yeah, if you're able to, I mean, worst case scenario, just get like a couple of hundred feet off the tee, you still could get up and down for a birdie on this hole. It's a, it's a pretty soft par four in that regard, as long as you don't get hung up early. Yeah, and uh, really, like I said, if you're anywhere within that white stake, like you can attack it for three. Yeah, usually you kind of play the forehand uh, for the approach shot. If you try to play the backhand hyzer, you can see this big tree that the basket's under. You can easily get caught up in it and get knocked into the road, which is out of bounds. So usually the forehand's kind of the safer play, unless you're just way on the right-hand side of the fairway and the forehand's not an option, as you're going to see, you know, Matteo here definitely looks for that forehand up shot. Yeah, and also, too, up at the green, it's actually slanted uh, up towards the road. So most of the time that forehand's just going to sit and not skip up towards the road as the backhand is going to skip towards the uh, mm -hmm. OB uh, ditch down there. Yep, absolutely. I believe this is a scepter from Cam. Oh. Just trying to skip it under there and give himself a chance at a birdie, and that looks well done. Yeah, he may have came up a little short, but it should be no problem for Cam. And uh, Caleb's going to try to do the same thing that uh, Matt and Cam have finished up, and he released that a little early. I think that's a justice, if I'm not mistaken. I know he likes to use that as like an overstable approach shot, but like you said, it's a little early out the hand, so it leaves him a little bit short. And here's you for eagle. Yeah, and I have about a 50-footer for an eagle here. I'm just giving it a run. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, you know, what, a, what a play. Yeah, I picked up the eagle. Um, this put me back on, you know, basically a birdie for every hole because I missed a hole, but... Like I said, my putt was feeling good today, and a 50-footer dead center for an eagle, you know, kind of, you know. That's a booster, that's for booster. sure. Yeah, as we are going to see Caleb come up a little bit short on his putt, so it looks like he's going to be selling for par. This is Matteo for his birdie. Cam's right up there for his birdie as well, so definitely some chances to get some scores here, but at the very least, you're going to come out of this with the lead. Yeah, and, you know, this should be routine for Matt and Cam to get their threes and just move in the whole way. Yeah, particularly for Cam, he needs to start scoring here pretty quick, keep himself in contention. As the rest of you guys are kind of sprinting towards the finish line right now, and Matteo will be able to float that one in there. So he'll stay one behind you, going into hole number eight. And yeah, Cam's right here. This should be a pretty routine putt, like 10 or 15 foot. You know, shout out. Uh, most people in Mobile know that car going. Oh, yeah. That's Mercedes Martin. Oh, yeah. She's got her own Facebook fan page. Oh, yeah. But surprised she didn't have the dog out walking. I guess someone. She usually stops right around here. Yeah. You know, that's usually when the dog comes back in the car. As we see Caleb come and tap in the four. And we'll uh, move on over to hole number eight. Kind of another. Pretty stock shot for most of you on this car to collect the birdie. Yeah, most people will go uh, huge spike or skip shot to the right. You'll have a couple of people with the forehand, but really you're just trying to play the uh, spike into that bush that's just to the uh, right of the basket, and then you got an easy putt to it. 
And uh, I actually let this shot go short, so I didn't think I had no chance of getting to the basket. But, you know, Firebird decided he wanted to push forward and skip. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, well within circle one. And, yeah, the, really the only thing that can happen is if you are right next to that bush, next to the basket, because then you may not have a putt. So you kind of want to be just before it or just after it to make sure that you have a pretty easy putt for birdie. Um, you can even fight through it sometimes and get right next to the pin. We're going to see... And Matt's taking the preferred line, a little bit of height, and uh, just underneath on the back side of that bush. And, you know, that's about a 10 to 15 foot putt that uh, should be routine for Matt. Yeah, definitely a good looking shot there from him. Okay, I'm going to look to basically take the exact same line. Yeah, he pulled it a little wide and maybe put a little bit too much juice on it. And oh, a lot of juice. Yeah, he skipped. Skip straight. Uh, that's the one problem you can run on this hole is just not controlling the speed of the disc. Yeah, it's like a, probably a 40 to 45 footer for birdie there, so that's going to be a tough one, not what he was looking for. So, good looking shot here from Caleb. Yeah, it looks like it needed a little bit more power, but he skipped on up there and got no shadows, and that should be about a 25 footer for Caleb. Yeah, here's Cam, well deep at the pin. Trying to see if he can't still sink a rather lengthy birdie putt again. Wind not too much of a factor here. Maybe a slight breeze might be making him think a little bit about it. Ooh. It was a good run, but he's not going to be happy with missing this one and the slow start he's up to. And then here's Caleb trying to make up for his missed putt last hole. Ah, just, just wide right the whole far. time. Yeah. Felt like he just didn't didn't have the confidence on that one. But uh, we see you now here, probably like a 20-footer for birdie, trying to keep the the train rolling. Oh, yeah. And hopefully, you know, just routine putt for me right here. I mean, after the one you just made, this one should feel like a cakewalk. And there it is. Drops it in. That's eight for eight for Mr. Downey here next to me. Yeah, yeah. This is about as well of a start as you can hope for on this course. Quite literally, yes. I mean, I guess you could have birdied A and you could have been nine down through eight. So, I could have. Unlucky. You know, I had the putt, too, and just just put it a little high. But, you know, can't complain with eight under through eight. No. So. That would be quite nuts if you did. As we are going to see Matty O here stay one behind you with that birdie as he continues to put together a good game here to open up his tournament. And Caleb and... Cam looking to take the pars here, heading into hole nine. Yeah, and, you know, that putt, you know, it looked like Caleb didn't have much, but that tree will sometimes get in your way if you ever go behind the basket over there. Absolutely. Yeah, a couple of little things to worry about in this one, though it is a straightforward hole. As we head on to, I think, the second longest hole in the course. It is a par four, 654 feet. And, uh... Yeah, definitely one that y'all want to get just because it is that distance where you feel like you should be able to reach it in two and get your birdie. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of people throw rollers on this hole, but that right gap, most people just take their longest disc and just throw it as far as they can to set up a uh, putter approach to the uh, basket. And, you know, I hit the perfect line and felt good out my hand, and I bet off a lot on this hole. And Boom. Yeah, it's way up there. Yeah, that's... It's about as good as you can ask for on this hole. What were you throwing there? That was a uh, Halo Destroyer. Okay. I imagine this is, I think this is an Orbit Rye by Dematteo. I believe so. It's kind of become a staple in his uh, bag. He's been throwing Rye's a lot this year, but this particular new Orbit uh, Royal Plastic, a little bit more stability, and he's been throwing them real well. And even with that being low, that thing still goes way up there. Yeah, and, you know, he's, giving it, <laughs> he's giving it a little kick, but I don't think it needed that kick. No. That's, that's a, that was blasted. Good as you can get on this hole. Yeah, as he's definitely increased his distance this year. He's always like a pretty far thrower, but I feel like even this year he's increased his distance by probably like a good 50 or 60 feet as we're going to see Cam try to unleash an emperor on this hole. Very much a go-to distance driver for, you know, infinite players. And, yeah, that is – that's yeah. hot. Yeah, he got all of that one. At first, you know, he thought it was going to hit that tree, but then once it caught that flex, you know, it was going to be probably the furthest drive on the hole. On the uh, card. Yeah, definitely. Cam has great form and good distance capabilities. And Caleb? And Caleb's going the up the middle route, so he's just going to miss a couple more trees to give himself a forehand uh, to the basket. 
yeah, that, that's a fine shot. That's you know plenty of distance for this hole to be able to get up and down for birdie. Now it's just about making sure you execute the upshot. That's the complicated part of this hole is pretty much done if you can get through that tree line. Yeah, now all you got to do is just make sure that you get your distance right and just put it within the circle. That's, again, probably that justice up shot there from Caleb yeah. Huber. Parks it. Yes, it's about as good as it can get. And here you go. Yeah, I'm going to try and just throw a zone around that tree, and I'd let it go early. So I'm going to be short, probably about 40 feet, maybe 30. I didn't, just didn't take my time and just let go of that shot early. And here's Matteo, and the anvil is kind of his forehand approach disc of choice all year long, and this will be no exception. And, yeah, that, that'll do. Yeah, that's about as good as it can get right there. Yeah, right there next to Caleb, and here's Cam, our furthest off the tee. I believe that's his A3 that he's just, you know, doing the same exact kind of shot, and, yeah, everyone's done their job here. Yeah, I'm, I was the only one that left myself a little, a little putt, but the other three have put themselves well inside the circle. Yeah, a little bit of a headwind here for you. But no problem. Gets it over the top? Yeah, just over the top, snuck it in, and kept that streak going. So A perfect front nine. Yep, and you got to have that to beat Matty O out here at this course. Cam will get a much-needed birdie here to at least keep himself in the hunt. <laughs> Though certainly yourself and Matty O are you know, already beginning to create a little bit of separation here as we head into the back half of the course in our opening round as Caleb here will tap in a birdie and Matty O will follow suit. Yep, and, you know, this front nine, uh, I started off about as well as you could start. Matty O is right on my tail. Caleb, you know, had kind of the uh, middle of what you wanted. Uh, he had left himself short on a couple putts, or he could have been right there with me and Matty O. And Cam's just disappointed with how he started. Yeah, so that is going to wrap things up here for our front nine. And you kind of already summed it up there. Yourself and Matt having a heck of a front nine. Caleb not too far behind. And Cam, a little bit of a cold start, but still has plenty of time to try to make that up as we approach the back half of the course. And again, I'm Dustin Murray, and with me has been Chris Downey. We've had a great time, and we'll catch you on the back nine. See you all soon.